Hello and welcome to this session in which we'll discuss deferred taxed asset. What is a deferred taxed asset? For one thing, we know it's an asset. What is an asset? Well, an asset is something that's going to give you benefit in the future, something that's going to benefit you. Well, benefit you as a result of what? Well, it's the result of deferring some tax deduction. In other words, you're going to have a difference, a temporary difference, not permanent, a temporary difference. And that difference is the result of a tax basis of an asset or a liability and the carrying value of that amount on the financial statement that will result in a future, future taxable deductible amount. Oh, hold on a second. Could you explain this a little bit slower? Yes. Yes, I can. So you have an item, either an asset or a liability. For the purpose of this example, I'm going to use a liability. Let's assume you have a warranty expense slash liability. How does it work for gap purposes? So let's assume we are looking for gap. For gap purposes, when you have a liability for an, for, for an estimated warranty, you will debit an expense and you credit a liability. This is what you do. You debit an expense and you credit the liability before you incur any expenditure, before you incur the cash expenditure, before you service that client. For tax purposes, for that particular year, when you estimated your liability, you don't do anything for tax. Why? Because if you did not really incur the item, if you did not really pay for the warranty, you, don't, you have no expense. Therefore, what's going to happen, you have a liability for gap, which is a liability for book purposes, and no liability for IRS purposes. There's a difference between those two. This amount, whatever that amount is, will, which will work in example, and the IRS amount, which is zero. As a result of those two differences, we're going to create future deductible amount. In the future, when the customer comes back and you actually service them, you will have an expense for tax purposes. And as a result, you will have a deduction. But what's going to happen for now, we are going to record this future deductible amount as a deferred taxed asset. This is what a deferred taxed asset is. It represents an increase in taxes refundable or saved. So in the future, what we are telling the investors, in the future, we're going to have actual cash expenses, which we're accounting for them now under the gap purposes, but in the future, they're going to be savings for tax purposes as a result of this temporary difference that existing at the end of the current year. The best way to illustrate these concepts is to actually look at some figures. During 20X1, Adam estimated its warranty cost related to the sale of, of its smart TVs to be 400,000 over the next two years. So Adam says, I'm going to have a um, estimated warranty expense of 400000 For book purposes, Adam recognized the warranty expense and its related estimated liability for warranties of 400000 So let me show you the entry that Adam will make for financial accounting purposes. For financial accounting purposes, Adam will debit warranty expense, Adam will debit estimated warranty liabilities, 400000 400000 Adam is expected to service 100,000 of the warranty in 20x2 and 320x3. So Adam thinks that in 2020x2, 100,000 will have to service the warranties and the remaining 300,000 will be in x3. That makes sense because the, the longer the TVs are out there, the more likely to break. Now, what would Adam do for tax purposes? For tax purposes for x1, this is 20x1, for tax purposes, no entry. So what did we do here? Well, for per books, for gap purposes, we have a liability of 400,000. For, for the tax return, we have no liability and no expense for that matter, assuming no customers came back for that year. So the liability is zero, the estimated liability. We, had a, we have a difference in those two liabilities, book difference of 400,000. As a result, we have a future deduction. As a result, we are going to have a deferred taxed asset. So the question for this will be compute taxable income, compute income taxes payable, compute income tax expense, and prepare the journal entries for this exercise. Before we do so, you must be either an accounting student or a CPA candidate if you're watching me. Please take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course, please, by not any means. The fact that you are watching me and you have a CPA review course or you are taking an accounting course, it means you are looking for additional help. I can help you. I have resources, multiple choice, true, false, lectures. My courses and my resources are aligned with your course 
per chapter. My CPA review material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley, Miles, whatever course you are taking, I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. Share it with others. If it's helping you, it's going to help other people. Just share it, like it. it. It helps me as well. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. And please join me on my GroupMe account, CPA exam support group, where you can have discussion with other CPA candidate and I do participate in those discussion as well. So let's start by computing taxable income. So you have to understand what is taxable income. Taxable income is an IRS term. Taxable income is what? Is how much your income subject to taxation. Income tax is payable is how much you have to pay the IRS. Well, let's take a look at what we are giving. Assume financial income is half a million and the tax rate is 20%. You are not giving taxable income, but you should be able to compute taxable income. Let's see how we compute taxable income. You have financial income of $5 million right here. Financial income is gap 5 million. What else are we, we are giving? We are giving the fact that you deducted of this, to get to this four, half a million, you deducted 400,000 as a warranty expense and the journal entry is right here you deducted 400,000 now this 400,000 should not be deducted for tax purposes so what do you need to do to financial income add to your financial income the temporary difference of 400,000 notice you deducted I'm gonna put it as a minus here rather than a parenthesis so you see the minus versus the plus so you deducted this to get to your gap income to go from gap income to IRS income you're gonna to have to add it now we find out your IRS income is 5.4 million what does that mean? It means you have to pay taxes on the 5.4 million, 20% 20, 20 tax rate. You have a tax bill of 1 million and 80,000. This is your income taxes payable. And this is your taxable income because they can ask you for either or. So we kind of figure out taxable income, figure out income taxes payable. Okay. Now, what is your income tax expense? We're going to see on the next slide, and we haven't looked at the deferred tax asset. So let's take a look and compute the deferred tax asset. This is what we expect. We expect in X2, this is X1, we expect in X2, 100,000 to reverse. In other words, 100,000 to be deductible for tax purposes. When this is deductible, it's going to give us $20,000 in tax savings. In X3, the remaining 300,000 to be tax deductible times 20%, it's going to give us tax savings of 60,000. Let's prepare the journal entry for X1. Remember for X1, it doesn't matter what year. And when you are preparing the journal entry, the first entry you make is income taxes payable. What you have to pay to the IRS is 1,080,000. The next thing you compute is your deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. Here we have a deferred tax asset because we're going to have future savings of how much? Of 80,000. So we're going to debit. It's an asset. Deferred tax asset of 80,000. Now, what's left is your income tax expense. What is your income tax expense? Your income tax expense is, is if you have deferred tax asset. So you have, you have to pay the IRS now 1,080,000. In future years, you are going to save 80,000. Therefore, your income tax expense for now is a million. Again, it's a plug. It's the debit is a plug. This is your income tax expense. Simply put, this 1 million has a current portion and a deferred portion. The current portion is the 1 million, the current portion, and the deferred portion is 80,000. You have a deferred tax savings. So let's take a look at 20x2. What would happen in 20x2? Let's assume for the sake of illustration, your income taxes payable happens to be, I don't know, 800,000. Just made up this number. Now you are going to reduce your deferred tax asset. It's going to reverse of 20,000. Now what's your income tax expense? Your income tax expense is 820, which is what you have to pay to the IRS, 800,000 plus 20,000 is 820. Here's what I want you to see. I hope, hope, and I hope you are familiar with T accounts because this is where the value of T accounts comes into place. In year one, in X1, here's what happened in X1. In X1, if we look at your deferred tax asset, and this is important to see, your deferred tax asset went from zero 
went up from zero to eighty thousand. Okay, went from zero to eighty thousand. The corresponding expense as a result, if this is a debit, the corresponding expense is a credit to expense. So your expenses went down by eighty thousand. So notice here, one million eighty thousand. You have to pay to the IRS, but your expense was eighty thousand less. In X two, in X two, let's take a look at see what happened in the third taxed asset. In X two. Your starting balance was 80. Now we have to reduce it by 20. So now your remaining is 60, which is the 60 here. So now what happened, your deferred tax asset was a credit. The corresponding debit is the income tax expense of 20,000. So your income tax expense, the corresponding, let me put the corresponding entry in a different color. The corresponding expense, if this was, this, if this was a credit, this must be a debit of 20,000 and that's why you have an additional 20,000 in income tax expense what should you do now to learn more about the third tax asset the third tax liability go to farhat lectures and work mcqs and true false now this is only the start of this discussion we're going to have to have prior balances we're going to we're going to look at different tax rate in future years there's a lot to learn we're just starting this so hang in there you're going to be fine. As I said, if you are listening to me, you're either a student or a CPA candidate, invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Your accounting courses are worth it. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.